Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Sunday, March 31, 2024. The year is 1761. Our main topic, Lisbon experienced its second major earthquake in six years, with effects felt as far north as Scotland. On March 31, 1761, a powerful earthquake struck the bustling city of Lisbon, Portugal, sending shockwaves throughout Western Europe. Measuring an estimated magnitude 8.5 on the surface wave scale, this event marked the second major earthquake to hit Lisbon in just six years, following the devastating Great Lisbon Earthquake of 1755. The impact was felt far beyond the Iberian Peninsula, with reports of tremors as far north as Scotland and as far south as the Canary Islands of Spain. The 1761 Lisbon earthquake and its subsequent tsunami were significant not only for their sheer force but also for their historical context. Occurring in the midst of the Enlightenment, a time of great intellectual and cultural advancement in Europe, this natural disaster highlighted the vulnerability of human societies to the unpredictable forces of nature. The earthquake struck at noon, catching the city's inhabitants off guard and causing widespread destruction. Buildings crumbled, and debris filled the streets, while the tsunami that followed inundated coastal areas, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. The loss of life and property was significant, with estimates suggesting that up to 10,000 people may have perished in the disaster. The impact of the 1761 Lisbon earthquake was not limited to the immediate aftermath. It had far-reaching consequences for the city's infrastructure, economy, and society. The rebuilding efforts that followed the disaster led to the creation of new buildings and public spaces, reflecting the latest architectural and engineering advancements of the time. The earthquake also prompted a renewed interest in seismology and the study of natural disasters, paving the way for future scientific breakthroughs. In conclusion, the 1761 Lisbon earthquake stands as a significant event in European history, highlighting the fragility of human societies in the face of natural disasters. Its impact was felt across the continent, and its legacy continues to be felt in the present day, serving as a reminder of the importance of disaster preparedness and the need for continued scientific inquiry into the forces that shape our world. The year is 1913. On the news, the Vienna Concert Society rioted during a performance of modernist music by Arnold Schoenberg, Alban Berg, Alexander von Zemlinsky, and Anton von Webern, causing a premature end to the concert due to violence. This concert became known as the Scanna Concert. Good evening, and welcome to our evening news broadcast. Today, we're taking a step back in time to March 31, 1913, when a concert in Vienna, Austria, made headlines for all the wrong reasons. The Vienna Concert Society had organized a performance featuring modernist music by four renowned composers, Arnold Schoenberg, Alban Berg, Alexander von Zemlinsky, and Anton von Webern. However, things took a turn for the worse when the audience reacted violently to the unconventional music, leading to a premature end to the concert. This event went down in history as the Scanna Concert. Context, the Scanna Concert was a time when modernism in music was still a relatively new concept, and many people were not yet open to the idea of breaking away from traditional musical styles. The composers featured in the concert were part of the Second Viennese School, a group of musicians who were pushing the boundaries of music and experimenting with new techniques. Their music was considered radical and avant-garde, and it challenged the conventional norms of classical music. Historical significance, the Scanna concert is significant because it highlights the resistance to change and the controversy that can arise when art pushes boundaries. The concert was a defining moment in the history of modern music, as it showcased the divide between those who embraced innovation and those who were opposed to it. The event also underscored the importance of art in challenging societal norms and sparking conversations about what is considered acceptable. 
In conclusion, the Scanna concert serves as a reminder that art has the power to provoke and inspire, and that the rejection of new ideas is a natural part of the evolution of art. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the past, and we hope you have a better understanding of this pivotal moment in music history. Our selected holiday for today, World Backup Day. World Backup Day is a significant holiday in the tech industry, celebrated annually to emphasize the importance of data protection and system security. It's a day to remind individuals and organizations of the critical need to safeguard their digital assets, from personal photos and documents to business data and systems. The cultural significance of World Backup Day lies in its ability to bring attention to the potential risks associated with digital data and the consequences of losing it. In today's digital age, data loss can have severe consequences, ranging from financial losses to emotional distress. World Backup Day aims to educate people on the importance of backing up their data and provide them with the tools and resources necessary to do so effectively. The holiday also highlights the role of backups in protecting against cyber threats, such as ransomware and malware, which can compromise sensitive information and disrupt business operations. By promoting the use of backups, World Backup Day helps individuals and organizations mitigate the risks associated with these threats and ensure their data remains secure. In addition, World Backup Day encourages individuals and organizations to adopt best practices in data management, such as creating multiple backups, storing them in secure locations, and regularly testing their integrity. By promoting these practices, the holiday helps to promote a culture of data safety and security, ultimately contributing to a more reliable and resilient digital ecosystem. Overall, World Backup Day is a vital holiday in the tech industry, reminding us of the importance of protecting our digital assets and promoting best practices in data management. By observing this holiday, individuals and organizations can ensure their data remains secure, and the digital world remains a safe and reliable place for everyone. On this day, in 1932, John Jakes, American author, D. 2023, was born. John Jakes, the renowned American author, left an indelible mark on the literary world with his captivating historical and speculative fiction works. Best known for his epic American Civil War trilogy, North and South, Jakes' writing career spanned over five decades, earning him widespread acclaim and devoted readers across the globe. Born in 1932, in Chicago, Illinois, Jake's passion for storytelling was evident from an early age. He began writing at the age of 16, and his first novel, The Texans, was published in 1958. However, it was his American Civil War trilogy, comprising North and South, Love and War, and Heaven and Hell, that cemented his reputation as a masterful storyteller. The trilogy has sold millions of copies worldwide and has been adapted into a popular television miniseries. Jake's literary prowess did not stop at historical fiction. He also penned several science fiction and fantasy novels, including The Kent Family Chronicles, which further showcased his versatility as a writer. Using the pen name J. Scotland, Jake's wrote several mystery novels, demonstrating his ability to excel in multiple genres. Throughout his career, Jakes received numerous accolades for his work. He was awarded the Distinguished Alumni Award from DePaul University and was inducted into the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame. In 2012, he was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Romance Writers of America. Jakes' impact on the literary world extends beyond his impressive body of work. He was a dedicated advocate for writers' rights, serving as the president of the Authors Guild from 1984 to 1986. He also played a crucial role in the development of the electronic book, recognizing the potential of digital publishing long before it became mainstream. Sadly, John Jakes passed away in 2023, leaving behind a legacy that will continue to captivate readers for generations to come. His contributions to literature, both in terms of genre and style, have undoubtedly enriched the literary landscape. His dedication to his craft and his commitment to advancing the interests of writers have earned him a place among the greatest authors of our time. In conclusion, John Jake's remarkable career serves as a testament to his exceptional talent, unwavering dedication, and boundless creativity. His work continues to inspire and entertain readers, and his influence on the literary world will endure as a lasting tribute to his remarkable life and achievements. We remember the life of Mineki Koga, Japanese admiral, born 1885, who died on this date in 1944. 
Mainichi Kogo was a highly respected Japanese admiral who served as the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Japanese Navy's combined fleet during World War II. Born in 1885, Koga graduated from the Imperial Japanese Navy Academy in 1907 and quickly rose through the ranks, earning a reputation as a skilled and strategic leader. Koga's impressive naval career was marked by several key accomplishments. In the 1920s and 1930s, he played a crucial role in the development of Japan's naval aviation program, helping to establish the Navy's first aircraft carrier units. During this time, he also served as the naval attaché to the United States, where he gained valuable insight into American naval operations and tactics. In 1939, Koga was appointed as the commander-in-chief of the Combined Fleet, the Navy's highest command position. In this role, he oversaw the Navy's operations during the early years of World War II, including the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941. Despite his successes, Koga's tenure as commander-in-chief was not without controversy. He was known for his strong personality and sometimes clash with other senior officers, including Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, who was the architect of the Pearl Harbor attack. Additionally, Koga's leadership during the Battle of Midway in June 1942 was criticized by some for being overly cautious, leading to a missed opportunity to defeat the American fleet. Despite these criticisms, Koga remained a respected figure within the Japanese Navy and was known for his strategic thinking and leadership abilities. He was also a strong advocate for naval aviation, recognizing the importance of aircraft carriers in modern naval warfare. Sadly, Koga's life was cut short when he died in a plane crash in 1944, while en route to a meeting with Japanese leaders in Tokyo. His legacy, however, continues to be remembered and celebrated by military historians and enthusiasts around the world. In conclusion, Mainiki Koga was a highly respected Japanese admiral who played a significant role in the development and operations of the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War II. His leadership and strategic thinking were highly regarded, and his contributions to the Navy's successes are still recognized today. Despite some controversies, Koga's legacy remains an important part of military history, and his impact on modern naval warfare is still studied and appreciated by many. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.